last time we we had started discussing about contact between surfaces so this is uh, very important because uh, whenever we talk about tribological systems there is always a contact right because without contact there is there will be no tribology so there is always a contact and there is always some load applied on the contact so but we have understood that uh, the apparent area is not the actual contact area the actual contact area is only at these points and these points are known as asperities so they are some projections are on the surface so these are asperities and from the profile study we have understood that with these asperities the slopes are the angle between the surface and the asperity is quite low it will be in the range of 10 degree okay. if we plot the profile in same scale in the length direction and the height direction so therefore uh, these asperities can be modeled as a sphere on a flat surface so this is how we can proceed to find out the contact area so once we can model like this then we can apply what is known as Hertz contact uh, Hertz analysis elastic analysis okay so Hertz analysis was given in very long back 1882 <coughs> and Hertz gave this um, analysis for larger solid larger sphere on a flat surface or a sphere on a spheres uh, but we are able to apply this analysis for smaller contact like asperity contact and basically because the assumptions that Hertz gave are still valid so his first assumption was surfaces are continuous smooth and non-conforming so which is fine which is applicable here the strains are small so strain is small which is also fine we can that these strains will be smaller because we don't assume that this elastic deformation will be too large because beyond certain point it will go into the plastic range so strain is small each solids can be considered as an elastic half space in the proximity of the contact region so this is a fully elastic region so this is elastic half space the surfaces are frictionless so another assumption which is required is that the contact uh, surfaces are frictionless so there is no friction between here which is actually not true um, for real surfaces there will be some friction so those are the assumptions of Hertz analysis and assuming that those assumptions are still valid we can use this equation this equation gives the radius as a function of the load R which is the radius of this sphere when the other surface is flat and E star or the composite elastic modulus which is given by this equation <clears throat> so you will see this equation quite often in contact mechanics so contact area is then given by this equation so simple pi r square so r we bring it from here to here and then we can get this one so from this equation from equation 2.11 we can say that the contact area a is proportional to the load to the power 2 over 3 so this is one inference we can get from this equation so Hertz equation is very very useful because almost there is no analytical way to find out the contact area between two surfaces under load so basically we we have to use the Hertz equation as long as the contact is elastic we can also say that the pressure which is W over A is proportional to W to the power 1 over 3. And as I said earlier that for ball on raceway, for ball bearings, 
this this part is taken as 2 over e to the power e e star so this is how this one will be written for ball on raceway so the normal approach between the sphere and the flat plate will be given by this equation so again this is uh, based on the same Hertzian analysis and uh, later in the next slide I will show you the uh, schematic of what we mean by the normal approach and solving question 2.12 for W we can write the load as this one so either you want to know the deflection or you want to know the load for a given de deflection so this these two equations basically give you load displacement characteristic between a sphere and a flat plate for purely elastic interaction. So this we have to understand that we can use these equations only if there is a purely elastic interaction. which is valid for most of the polymers and uh, elastomers but for metals it may not be very much valid because metals will undergo plastic deformation quite soon so plastic deformation of asperities beyond elastic deformation of the asperities plastic deformation will happen so so for example initially we have got this asperity and this uh, flat plate and let's say it is under some deformation here but as we increase the load as W will increase this will go further down and we will see that this starts flattening if this this is the softer material so the softer material will deform and this deformation is plastic deformation so you get a flat surface after plastic deformation so beyond the elastic deformation of the asperities plastic deformation will happen the asperities gradually flatten against another asperity or a smooth surface the real area of contact then is given by this one the pressure experienced by the p is the pressure experienced by the asperities so this is a for plastic deformation this is a simple uh, equation for pressure so basically uh, pressure will be given by load divided by area so that means you have applied certain load so it must be matched with certain area to have a constant p and the pressure has to be constant because pressure is related to the yield stress of the material because here the uh, material is yielding so the material will continue to yield nearly similar kind of pressure under similar kind of pressure so therefore w over a has to be fixed so as you increase w a will increase so as you keep increasing w the a will continue to increase so this contact area will continue to increase so as load on the contact increases a critical point is reached where the elastic limit is exceeded within the asperity of the softer material the real area of contact a for the asperity then grows so that its yield pressure P will balance the total normal load according to the relation given here. So basically this is a yield pressure. That means the pressure required for yielding. So this is not exactly the yield strength but the yield pressure. So that means there is some relation between yield strength and uh, the, this pressure and I will talk about that later. So the above analysis is also valid for the case of two spherical bodies. So just now we did the elastic deformation of a sphere on a flat but if there are two spheres in contact and frictionless in a static contact under a load then we can show the deformation schematically like this. So here you see there are two spheres, sphere 1 and sphere 2, they are in contact. So initially this one was the plane of contact here, xy is the plane of contact and z axis is this one which passes through the 
if it is a sphere then passes through the center of the sphere so now you can see that uh, we have applied the load and if the two surfaces were not going to deform then the profile will look something like this so this this is the one solid and this is another solid so that means there will be interference they will go into each other okay but since there will be some deformation here they cannot go into each other so this is only the assumption that the solids profile will look like this if there was no deformation and no interference from each other but since they will push each other so there will be deformation and because of the deformation there will be some contact here so total deflection that means how much total surfaces are deflecting will be a combination of deflection in one and deflection in two delta one and delta two so this is given as delta one plus delta two so total deflection delta is delta one plus delta two basically if you look at the the two bodies quite away from the contact let's say here so here this body has moved by delta 2 and this body has moved by delta 1 that has caused these deformations here and if there was no deformation then the interference was going to be this much but because of the deformation elastic deformation in each other material the actual contact will be only this much which is about half of the the in total interference if there was no elastic deformation no interference from each other so this is how we can understand about the contact area uh, between these spheres so now since these two are spheres then r is given by this equation 1 over r is equal to 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 so that means the equation that i showed you before for herge uh, hergian equation can still be used all we have to do is to change the r value and use this equation to get the the r value so in the previous case when one surface is flat then one of the r is infinity so that means 1 over r will be zero so that's why we used r as same as r or radius of the sphere when it is flat sphere on a flat surface but for a sphere on a sphere we should use this equation so the contact area is circular for both sphere on flat and sphere on sphere, sphere cases because this is axisymmetric so if it is a sphere like this and there is a center so axially it is very symmetrical so therefore the contact area will be a circle and as we increase the load the radius of the circle will increase however the pressure distribution is elliptical so although this is a circle but the pressure at each point on this circle so this is the contact circle so pressure at each point will be given by this equation which is elliptical in nature so p is p naught 1 minus r over a squared and total squared uh, total under root p naught is the mean pressure so overall mean pressure so overall whatever a and divided by sorry w divided by a so this is the mean pressure so this gives us pressure profile in the contact area okay here it has been normalized so it is one here sorry p naught is not the mean pressure but it is the it is the maximum value of the pressure so which is here p naught so p naught is given by 3 over 2 pm and finally we can get this equation to find out the maximum pressure so this is the normal st stress which is compressive in nature and this is the radial stress which 
is compressive in nature up to here then it goes into tensile and then again back to zero so that means beyond the contact point there is still some stress which is tensile stress so whenever we are keeping a ball on a surface like in a ball bearing so of course there is a stress here at the contact but even beyond the contact also there is some stress and this stress is tensile in nature so that's the reason why we uh, see that fatigue happens in this case because tensile stress which goes beyond the contact point and this gives the profile of the shear stress so shear stress divided by p naught p naught is the maximum pressure so it has been normalized and you can see that the maximum shear stress will happen is here at this point 0 0.3 times p naught basically and the distance from this center of the contact circle is this one around 0 0.5 z over a so these are quite well established analysis and um, we we can learn from here in terms of the contact pressure the actual contact stress in a tribological contact and we can understand about these shear stress in the subsurface so as uh, the elastic uh, as the load is increased the elastic deformation will continue but at some point the onset of plastic deformation will begin so the plastic deformation will start because the material has ex the stress has exceeded the material's yield point or yield strength and the yielding is a very very complex process and especially in this kind of situation where you have got a, a sphere on a plate or a sphere on a sphere in a tensile stress in a tensile test when you conduct the tensile test it is very simple okay because we assume that the load is uniaxial and the stress is all uniform here but in all other types of situations the stress stresses are very complex so to simplify this two yield criteria have been proposed so these yield criteria basically tells us under what situation the yielding will happen and these are there are two um, more popular and actually there are more yield criteria but two are most popular so one is called yield uh, tresca yield criteria another is von mises so in the tresca yield criteria criterion you will see that the yield point in pure shear is k is half the yield stress in simple tension okay. so it is assumed that the <coughs> difference in the principal stresses sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 2 sigma 3 so whichever gives the maximum value is when this value reaches k then we call it the yielding will happen and this comes out to be equal to sigma y over 2 so that means shear yield stress, yield stress is equal to half of the yield stress in tension, tensile test. So already we have the data of sigma y from this type of test so all we have to do is to divide by 2 to find out the shear yield stress or shear yield strength of the material so this is the stress at which the material will start deforming and in the von Mises criterion it is a little bit more complex so it is a combination of the principal stresses in this way this is given as k square and this comes out to be sigma y square over 3 so again sigma y is the same the yield stress in tension or tensile test so using von Mises 
uh, yield criterion, we can give the shear yield stress by this equation. So you will see if you, we compare this Tresca with bone mices, bone mices is approximately 15% larger than the Tresca yield strength. So, so depending upon situation, this gives a simpler relation. So depending upon situation, people either use Tresca yield criterion or bone mices yield criterion. So this just tells us at what point the plastic yielding will initiate. For the axisymmetric contact of two spheres, the maximum shear occurs beneath the surface on the axis of symmetry, the z-axis, and it is given by this one. So the load at yielding, so when the yielding is initiates just in the subsurface. So this gives us what will be the load and which is given by this equation. So here you can see that this ratio is very important. So this ratio tells us that in order to have large load for yielding, this should be large and this will be large if sigma y is large and if e is small, right? So this ratio decides what kind of load at which the yielding will happen. So obviously we want to have large stress or large force required to plastic plastically deform this surface. So in order to get large load, we should have this ratio large and for that we need to have sigma y large and E star small. The maximum normal approach before the onset of plastic deformation is given by this. So, so this is how much they will approach each other. Okay. So as we talked about this one, so first is the elastic contact and then continue to deform elastically. So how much, let's say if we follow this point here, far away from the contact, so how, how much this point has gone down? So this is delta y before yielding has initiated. So that is given by this equation. Again, here uh, y is the yield stress in simple tension, which is same as sigma y. So this is how we, uh, we can deal with contact uh, between two uh, bodies. And for our interest, most of the cases are either sphere on a flat plate or a sphere on a sphere. So we don't have to talk about uh, flat plate on flat plate because in that case we assume that there is a full contact so it will be just load divided by area. So this uh, table gives uh, a list of all the formula for normal contact of elastic solids using the Herzian analysis. So here stress deformation formula for normal contact of elastic solids. So semi-contact radius or width is given by this, we, we have seen that. And this is for line contact. So if we are talking about a roller bearing on a flat surface, then it will be a line contact. So further anal analysis has been done to take care of the line contact as well. So normal approach, just now we have seen those equations. Then contact pressure. So this is the pressure profile. This is the maximum pressure, PM is the mean pressure, the maximum tensile stress, maximum shear stress. We saw that this 0.31 P0, limit of elastic deformation and composite curvature, we should use this equation and composite modulus, we should use this equation. So this table gives a list of all the uh, equations that are useful for uh, contact uh, analysis. We do not need to go into much more detail of this contact analysis as far as tribology is concerned because in most of the cases Herzian equation will serve the purpose. Although it is not correct in all cases because for example we have assumed 
frictionless interface which is not true now um, if we talk about plastic deformation of asperities so beyond elastic deformation of asperities plastic deformation will happen the asperities gradually flatten against another and this relation will be valid so we have seen this one also before the contact area will be load divided by the pressure okay which is the yield pressure and it has been normally observed that the pressure pm or the the pressure at which it will deform the yield pressure so i think it should be called pm is roughly equal to 3 times sigma y this has been practically or through experiments it has been found so this number can vary it may go from 2.8 to 3 depending upon material so we have to find out what is the number for our given material so this for metals i guess we can use three so that now you can see that this yielding pressure is not the yield strength of the material or yield strength intention so this is yield strength intention So it is three times that value. So this equation is very, very useful for the case of hardness. So for example, if I have got a tip, so now asperities can be assumed as a tip, hard tip. So it is not going to deform and our metal will deform. Okay. So there will be plastic deformation. So we are talking about plastic deformation here. So after you remove the, as the tip, which is modeling asperity basically, on the surface what you will see is a small projected area. So this is the projected area. So now load divided by the projected area will give you the pressure at which this impression was made and then you can find out the yield strength. So that means for ductile materials, especially ductile metals and some of the ductile polymers, you can find out the yield strength just by using this hardness test. Uh, but of course, you need to know this number. So prior to that, some correlation has to be made between the pressure PM and sigma Y in order for us to use that equation. For most of the surfaces, now we can write this one A proportional to W2 over 3. So A is the contact area, W is the load. So this comes from the Herzian equation. So for elastic interaction, for plastic interaction, we can write contact area is proportional to W, which comes from this equation. So these analysis will be uh, useful it, at many places when you are analyzing a uh, contact of uh, tribological contacts. So for example, bearings or brakes, clutches, in all kinds of application, this will be useful. And actually for analytical analysis, Herz equation is the most useful. We do not have any other simpler form of such equations. But nowadays, uh, of course, you can use finite element method to find out the contact uh, area and contact pressure.